also the um, approval of minutes of the 24th. I had a couple of questions. I just want to make sure. Miles, did you? I didn't have any comments. But... Okay. I just want to clarify. Clark is going to bring over assessments for the boiler. Who is Clark? Tom Clark, but no. Um, Wasn't it? Weren't we going to check with Bobby and see if he had any? Well, and Townsend, yes. Okay, so. So, um, I'm trying to think, I'm sorry. I think, um, Actually, he might have honestly said that he would do that. Um, Tom? Yeah. Oh, okay. That doesn't mean, yeah. So I'm going to just put the word Tom in there? Or T or, 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 T or something, so we know who it is. All right. Okay, and then... Okay, and then... Um, it says that the board is scheduled to have a stormwater public hearing regarding the stormwater plan. It is 6.30 on Wednesday the 7th. Is that a CIP conflict? Um, it, it is, and um, CIP is meeting this week and will. Um, it already knows that that's a conflict, okay. and CIP will work around it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't set as of that. Right. Um, on the National Guard end, is there any follow-up? Um, it yeah. says she said that we get more information. Yes. So to follow up on that, no. they're, um, they don't apparently do that anymore, and nobody who currently works there is aware of them ever having done that. Oh, okay. So it's not going to happen. It, it, that is not going to happen. Okay. I'm going to put no longer. That's it. Okay. On that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, and that's all I have. So those modifications. Is there a consensus to approve? Yep. Okay. All those. We have consensus to approve that. Um, and we can approve the July 8th, indicating that we would put the non-public in and out at the end of it. That's the yep. only thing that's different. Yep, just, okay. just leave those times. Yep. Okay, is consensus to approve those as well? Okay, so we have consensus on the July 8th ones as well. Okay. Community input? Nelson, are you, are you on the agenda? I'm not on the agenda, I just popped in. Oh. I was in the neighborhood. So. Oh, okay. You know, I have to read it, just take a quick look at the map and pass it around, would you? Um, this is actually on the agenda um, later. For um, the owner of the property uh, um, where the Coney Bridge is located on Rollins Road that goes over the railroad is interested in restoring that bridge. The railroad won't allow it. Um, they're looking for a letter of support from the select board um, for the construction in hopes that that could sway the railroad in allowing them access to the property to restore the decking material to the historic bridge. It's one of um, maybe the only pony bridges left in the state, or one of very few. One of one of three left in New Hampshire. Four in New England kind of goes in New Hampshire, and one in Pennsylvania, and that's the ball game. Um, the bridge goes over the river. Or? The river. It's 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 an overhead bridge that goes over the railroad. If I may just give a quick history, and I'm, I will make it quick. Yeah. Um, the railroad, before the railroad came, there was Ham Road that was sparsely resided upon. And it ran from Fresh Brook down where the which one path is all the way to Rollins Road. Um, 
today, and then the railroad came in the 1840s. So Ham Road, um, as it went from south to north, across the Turnpike and Twombly Brook, the railroad, and then up to up to Rollins Road, passing through the acreage owned by Farmer Rollins. In 1919, the estate of the Rollins family was purchased by, well, the, the farmstead was purchased by Farmer Dodge, and it still retains a name now. I think this one of the significant things is that there is no longer a named Ham Road. Uh, Ham Road that was asphalted between the Turnpike and the Brook, the Fresh Brook to the south is now Old Mill Lane. And um, what exists from Twombly Brook up to Rollins Road is essentially a farm lane. But it once was a public thoroughfare. So I mean, I'm, so I made that point. And, and between, the, essentially between the um, Twombly Brook and the Turnpike, you can see from aerial photographs, but you have to be in Lewis and Clark to find a lot of it. It's just plum disappeared. Um, let's see, I'm, I'm going to get to my question momentarily, I promise, but uh, there was one other point I wanted to make. Oh, yes, in 1929, the uh, railroad had to rebuild the bridge, and they acknowledged that not the private user, but the exclusive user at that point was Farmer Dodge. And because the road was no longer being used as a public thoroughfare. But the railroad acknowledged that despite his exclusive use, it was still a town road. The town did not maintain it. Uh, it, did not, it did not plow it in the winter and so forth. So it essentially, I don't know if they used the term class six in those days, but it was essentially a class six road. So here, here's my question. Does the town still own the road? Is it, is it indeed a class six? Road in the town of Rollinsford, New Hampshire? I think that's a really great question, and it would be difficult to discern that, but I think the primary way to discern that is that if it has not been officially declassified, then my guess is there's no reason to believe why it wouldn't still officially be a road. Unless, if I, if I trot over to the county deeds office, and I, and I learn that the town deeded the road over to, to uh, Farmer Dodge and whoever lived on the other side at the time, down, down toward the turnpike. Um, yes. I don't expect to find that. Well, also, don't be confused by the fact that very old roads are very often owned by the property owners, which does not negate the fact that this, the state or the town has the right to traverse and maintain that area. So, but that, whether or not, not the property owner... Road, well, well... Regardless of who owns it, it may still be a class six road. We have class five roads that are likely owned by property owners and not the town. It's hard to discern that with really mm, old roads. A sticky point. Because I know that, that a, a class six road, which is owned by a town, can go down through a particular property owner's acreage. You know, it's Smith on this side, Smith on that side, but it's still a town class six road. But ownership is a separate engine. point. Yeah, but the town wants to maintain the control of the road in that instance. So, so I, I great questions, but not a, we don't have a great answer to, to this evening. Is that is that the real one? Um, I think that's the short answer. It would take some research, but um, I can look into the fact to the to the question about whether or not it would have to be. My guess is it would have to be officially voted to be discontinued yes. in, in order for a road to just disappear. And if we cannot find evidence in town reports of such, then I would say it by de facto exists. I found a copy, this is, I guess, marginally relevant, but I did find a letter because the, the once upon a time when I was on the historical committee, we were interested in the in Indigo Hill Road. And there was, I found a letter from the Somerset selectman, and by, by then Rollins would have said his own separate town, directing the property owner to discontinue maintenance on, on the Summersworth uh, part of Indigo Hill Road. So, as I said, it's marginally relevant, but, but yeah, 
such records are useful. Uh, but I would like to, you know, I'd, I'd certainly like to know the answer, and I would be suspicious the town would like to know the answer too, you know, whether whether the town owns that road or not. Well, that, that you brought up an interesting point because it may be since the select board is authority over roadways, which is why you can park ordinances and restrictions such as parking and commercial vehicles over roadways, that they may have the power, you know, through a process of public hearings to go from like a class five to a class six and such. I'm not sure where the distinction, where where certain regulatory powers are within the governing body or the legislative body. So we can find that out. Because if it's in the select board minutes, either way, it's a research project, and, and it's not to be known in any kind of short order. Okay. You may keep them out. They <laughs> may resurface in 200 years, and they'll say, that bozo got the, got the, the north arrow. You know, it needs to be a few degrees more anti-clockwise. All right. It'll be good to have for the file. I so what should I do? Just, I, should I bring your phone off the hook daily or just wait? Um, you know what you might do if you have time or if those you know care to have the time is um, search the town reports for oh. certain words such as how, discontinuance. How far back does the town report go? I mean, I, I rearranged them in the vault years ago, but I don't remember that they went um, back all that far. UNH has all but a small oh. handful of them online. So From 1849 on? Um, I, not necessarily every year, but most years. They only, they, they've got three or four not present. So um, if you've got good software, or you can otherwise search PDFs, you can at least figure that out. That'll, that'll determine whether or not the town, through a town meeting, took any action. Separate to that, searching through select board minutes, you know, um, I don't want to give you a whole lot of real hope that that's going to happen any time. Okay. So. But I, I, I do, if this thing, with the, I'm, I'm not really an active member of this. I told them that you know, I would do a few things. This is one of the few things. But um, it would be nice to know when they approach the railroad. Because uh, the railroad really does need, by prescription, to keep that bridge up. If there's if there's usage on both sides. If farmer, if farmer Rollins kind of wants to take cows across or whatever he wants to do with them, it certainly should be within his capacity to do that, and right now the state of the bridge is preventing that. So, but if it's, if it is a town road, I think that, that argument is strengthened, uh, the more so. You might also do well with certain people in town who have historic memories and know people with historic memories, because it's not something that would just happen, um, by way of negligence, it would have taken an action, and so somebody might yes. remember the action. Yeah, it would have had to have been deeded over to, to the Something. property owner, I would say. Okay. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you. Good luck for Good luck for the research. Thank you, Chief. Basic permit? They have to go to the fire department. Oh, okay. Thank you. Highway? Purchase the paint so we can do this right um, 
I don't know how I, the only reason why I put it up at the full amount is because I don't know exactly how much pain it's going to take this year. You know, we'll have an idea how much we need every year after that. Um, I'll move purchase order 1625 to Sherwin Williams for up to $1,500 for uh, striping paint. Okay, I'll second it. Um, what are you striping? What are you? All of them. All of them. Crosswalks, handicapped squats, and in town. In town. Oh. Okay. So they used to hire it. Yeah. So are you going to do like you had? I think you had mentioned it previously, like arrows for your transfer station to yeah, yeah. keep people yeah, we'll going, going in the right that. direction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we I made some templates. Up, so. I saw them. They were very nice. All, right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 So you're not going to strike like slightly. Oh, no. Well, I, I am not pushing a <laughs> hand machine down. So you have to walk behind the machine, so. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps uh, doing some short jobs. But. There was no talk about doing the striking down on the side road, though. Uh, I, yeah, I don't think we should. I, mean, I, I don't know. I if prefer to dirt, to be honest. Um, <laughs> so we can bring it up, honey. I you know, we can bring it up to the uh, traffic safety committee if it's a necessary evil. I don't, I don't know. Did it have it on there before? No. I didn't think it did. Okay. It was, it was striped, but not slightly. Yeah, I don't know. You can't strike that road anyway. It has to be striped. Yeah. But, I mean, you got bare road and a few other roads that haven't been restriped in there. So I don't know what you got to do for that. So that's, that's just whole new ball game. I don't even know what that would cost. I haven't looked into it, but, but as you know, the paving is done. Uh, they they came in under the tonnage, so I don't know what, how that's going to be reflected by the time the final bill is here. But we're going to be using some of it to do some uh, swales and stuff down on the side of the people. That the roads are great. Yeah. I went up through right. Heritage and uh, yeah. Sligo, and they look great. I wish they would have been a little bit warmer than you do it. Yeah, it was a little tight in the long run. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I, they must be used to it. I don't know. But, yeah. Well, they did have, uh, on Friday, two of the young guys for a pipe did go down with Ethan's truck. Really? Yeah. 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 yeah, they were they're okay. But, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was pretty hot. Yes, it was. No, anything for me? I got a call on the answer machine from the Andy with reference to Church Street again, complaining about the runoff on the Hill Stone Green on the Church Street Neville area. And her parking lot gets washed out. And actually, I took a ride by there tonight when it was raining pretty good, and she does get it all from the looks of it. But uh, we need to either put a swale across the whole front of the driveway to get the water on the town property or uh, that whole stretch. We've got to do something there other than. Going into the storm drainage, that's the quick way out would be to put a swale, keep the water going down the side of the road and step through the property. That's a pretty good run down to where you are. People are part of you know, going in the driveway and stuff. So, it's been an ongoing complaint since I've been here. Uh, uh, sportsman? Yeah, the old sportsman club, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just take a ride by and see it. Yeah. Too. It, you know, definitely needs to be something done there. Yeah. It's and something they we can do, so. They were probably in the wintertime, too. Yeah. Yeah. So all, it's all because of water. So if you do a swell there, that's where they drive in and out, though. Right. But, so, I mean, well, we could just raise it up okay. and have the water run towards, you know, instead of sort of make it flat. Okay. And then continue, put some gravel on the back to smooth it up so they can get it in and run out and have it, you know. Just raise it, keep the water running in the next side of the road instead of. Is that something that you guys can water? do? Oh, okay. All right. But it's something you can do. Okay, so I went down to Cricket Lane to look at the situation. Yeah. Cricket Lane, right? Yeah, yeah. Cricket Lane. Um, so you're talking about the, the big circle in the middle there with the trees and, mm -hmm. and, and what they're doing is they're putting their leaves there, which is causing that problem, right? That's part of the problem. Okay. Yeah. Is, there, is there a dr uh, drain in there, too? Yeah, okay. Is, Underneath some, all those leaves. You told me there is a drain okay. in the center there somewhere. Right? So is that something that we're going to be considering well, doing? We're, we're going to clean it out as soon as we get a chance. You're going to clean out the... Yeah, so then okay. find out what else we can do down there. 
Okay, so at this point, we, didn't we talk about it? Can you call it a soil? Did, didn't we talk yeah. about that there? Yeah, we well? end up doing something to that. Okay. Too. We okay. See what, you know. Find out what you got first, and then you're going to get back to us. Okay, that's fine. I just went down to look and see if I could totally understand what it was. And, you know, I saw this pile was kind of in the middle, and kind yeah. of it's at the bottom of the circle. The sign should like, be here if you just uh, I audit sign, no dumping. Yeah. That step out should be a Wednesday for any of the shipping. So which house is getting the water? Is it the water? Yeah, yeah, on the water, the last one in on the, the on the right. Uh, on the right. When you're looking, it's on the right. That. Right. Okay, that's what I thought. When I was well, you can see the driveway going downhill. Yep, yep, that's what I thought it was too. Okay. All right, that's all, all right. good. Do you guys have a refrigerator in your? Mm -hmm. Do you have a big refrigerator? Yes. I mean, um, I want to bring down some. Um, Gatorade and water for the gentleman on the side. I brought them down some on Saturday. There was only two of them there. So, but where, I brought, was uh, where are you? <laughs> I was around there somewhere. Oh, I didn't see you. Oh. I was just talking to the two oh. guys. Yeah. Um, somebody brought this. Somebody brought. Uh, somebody brought a lot of them because I. It was me. I got one oh, thank yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> but I'd like to bring some yeah. to have down. Yeah, we got. Uh, yeah. Can, okay. I bring him, yeah. can I bring him to the highway? They have access yeah. to the highway? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. There's a little small refrigerator at the transfer station, and there's a bigger one on the highway. Okay. Okay, I'll bring some down. You guys yeah. and, sure. and transfer them. Yes. Okay. All right, very good. Good night. Good night. Are you both going to yep. Yep. the fire station? Yep. Good night. All right. Police? The select board had initially approved and put together an entertainment place. I know you're coming. This is lost it and the transition with folks down there. So, what if you get the select board to re sign it, if you would? So, I can send that out to them. They lost it, not for any reason, but they no, lost it because they, they someone didn't really catch it. it. Yeah. So they have to refile. Okay. All right. Um, so I'll make a motion that we um, issue a dance and entertainment license to the American Legion. Okay. I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Change the date to be okay. today's date. You want me to change the date to be today's date? It says no, one time. That's the beginning of the year. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. The American Legion is looking to host a cornhole tournament uh, next month down there, and um, they were told by someone from the town to contact us. We have no regulations for that, and there's no need for them to request or uh, apply for and receive a second entertainment license because it's really not entertainment. It's just they're putting together this event outside. Um, they've spoken with the folks at the uh, Liquor Commission who would really uh, regulate this more than we would. Mm -hmm. And uh, from what they've told me that uh, they have no problem with that, uh, or the state has no problem with that, but the state would be looking just a letter from the town of Rawls saying we have no problem with that. So, with your permission, I present, I prepared a letter dated today. It says the town of Rawls and the Rawls Police Department have any issues with the American Legion Post Police that's holding a cornhole tournament at, at their location as long as you have satisfied any of our requirements as set forth by the State of Manager Booking Commission. So what you're saying is it's going to be outdoors and they're going to be selling liquor outdoors, it sounds right. like. Yes. Okay, In so. They assume it's designated. Right, the designated area. area across the street. Uh, we've already had a discussion with them about uh, prohibiting alcohol from going across the public way, going down to the town of mm -hmm. things like that. Okay, so you Got it all. Hopefully. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. I don't think we need a motion to approve both sides of the Okay. Yeah, I think that's as long as we're that's what consensus says we're approving it, yes. then we'll let it Townsend later this week. Mm -hmm. I had planned a meeting with uh, Mike last week, but we had a priority in Townsend. I wasn't able to meet with him. 
so that we can once and finally find out uh, and get a list from them as to what service and maintenance they've done all of our units downstairs, all of the HVA systems as well as the as well as the furnace. So hopefully at the next board meeting we'll have something to present to you. Because that's what Dick was looking for, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they did meet with Dick Fortier and had a brief discussion with him. He was supposed to come down to the PD last week uh, to meet with me to, to show me things and whatnot, things that he had found. Um, if they get busy with the schools and kind of but tomorrow when Rich is here, Dick will come down and meet with two of us. He show us what he showed Carol. He seems to think and our furnace has a lot longer life than they, 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 they indicated. We were initially told. Yeah. 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 Well, the salesperson did tell us that you know, we should get you know, a couple more years out of it anyway. Mm -hmm. So, so are the people that, you know, our insurance carrier, actually, because the insurance carrier sees a big bow hole on the sign. But, mm -hmm. that's, you know, but that's just really like an outer cover. Mm -hmm. That's to you know, prevent a fire from outside of it should something internally fall apart in this world. Once he gets a look at the maintenance and stuff, you know, he might change his mind too, who knows, but at this point we'll bring him for that so he can review them and give us a better understanding. Yeah. Good, thank you for doing that. That's all I have for you folks. Anything for us? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
we needed one of those, we needed a floating uh, strainer for the same kind of thing, and then some adapters to hook these lines to the engine. So what we did is we had to go out and buy these things. We did. Um, the reason why I gave you that background is it's uh, for $751.75 for the heating equipment. But what happens now is we have the same equipment on engine one, we have the same equipment on engine two. So for split going some places, everything's right there. These guys can start learning where and what it is. Great. Um, I'll move purchase order 1619 to Fire Safe USA for 751.75 for um, equipment. And that comes out of the equipment line item. We get plenty of funds in there to cover those needed equipment. I'll second it. Those in favor say aye. Aye. That's the state of New Hampshire for Department of Safety. This is tuition for uh, Firefighter 1 classes uh, for a couple of our members. Uh, it's coming out of the training line item. And again, it's for them to complete the Firefighter 1. We have, we have five guys right now that are in the main team. This guy is going to start his uh, two weeks. He starts his level one class, and the other guy is at fire academy right now, doing his recruit school at the fire academy. Which are all the options that you can have for getting yourself certified. I'd rather jump in an academy by far as the best. In two months, you come out with everything that you need. It's high intensity. It's on the grounds. He lives in the barracks. He's basically committed two months of his own time to be up there. So some of this is covering that at 1654 for for their needed tuition. Okay. Up front. I'll move purchase order 1654 to the state of New Hampshire uh, for $800. I thought you said it was a different number than 800 No, no. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, $800 for uh, firefighter one tuition. It is different. different. Where you go, you do different classes and charge you different. Ones. Yeah, I think you said the purchase order number. I thought Probably yes. did. <laughs> <Yeah. That's it. laughs> Okay, so purchase order 1654, I second it. Um, so the one that's staying at the academy, are we paying for that? Or is he paying for that? He's paying for it now. But I had the front 400 bucks so he can get himself enrolled and done. And then once he gets done, he has a certificate, like I said, we'll reimburse the rest of it. Okay, so, so what is this for then? This is for that? Is it an addition to Bart Bagger 1? Nope, that's kind of like... This is just it? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's for the one at the academy, and then there's another guy stuck, and there's a satellite class, which is going to be held in the ride. Starts on oh, okay. August 6th or something. So this is two people? Yep. Okay. Yep. Got it. Can I actually put on there two people? Sure. Two I got the names on there. It says Pop and Roy right on the top. Oh, that's their names? Yes. I thought it was a code of something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> all right, then. All in favor say aye. 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 No codes. I try not to do that. <laughs> try to be very transparent. <laughs> Last one I have for you guys is saved over for uh, repair work on the forestry. Had a transmission leak, so obviously with that we weren't going anywhere. Had to replace a serpentine belt, uh, so this is uh, 1653 purchase orders going to come out of vehicle repairs, total of 624 dollars to basically get the vehicle back up. I'll uh, move uh, purchase order 1653 to the city of Dover for 624.19 for uh, transmission work and. Uh, serpentine Belt and Forest Street 1. Okay, I'll second that. Did you have more info? No. Well, you can sign that one off and then I'll expound on that a little bit about the forestry. Oh, okay. But not about this individual. Not about that individual forestry. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.
Good to replace all the brake lines. Now the transmission line is gone, the serpentine went away, and there's problems with the frame when it's starting to rust to the point where they've done some repairs before because we added loose springs and whatnot a few years ago, so we did further off roading. But uh, it's basically getting to the point where I'm just passing on to you guys and we'll be presented at CIP come Thursday. So this is the pickup truck that, yeah, an old three. that we both bought used, right? Yes. Yes. This used to be a camera for his pickup truck. Yeah. yeah. Which did. Yeah. We didn't do that. Yeah, however all that went down. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, so it's not the forestry forestry you used to have that we got. Oh, no. No, it's not the that's one it. That, and then you that, put that something inside. That Barry had gotten, he yeah. that. Yeah, and that went Done away. the same thing. Yeah. Had a lot of issues, and it wasn't worth putting the money into that right. rate. Plus, it wasn't really set up to be forestry on that type of thing. Like this became more uh, available and better to do what we wanted to. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you could slide in. It does. Yeah, it's a slide like in. Like a tank. Yeah. yeah. And that's going to be fine. I mean, basically, the vehicle is falling apart underneath the mm -hmm. skin unit. Mm -hmm. So as we go down the road and head to the place where the skin unit comes up and goes into whatever the vehicle is, that, that is something that's completely transferable. There's no cost to fit in any size of the bed that we have to be in. So, okay. so we're good on that part. It's just the vehicle itself is stuck in the bottom part. I just want to bring you away that it's, it's like every week we're finding something wrong. One thing that we have that helped us is we have one guy on the apartment now, his name is Colin Lewis. He's certified mechanic who works at the Honda garage over on the point. And he's fixed a lot of stuff for us. Um, Monday night he'll come in, we have exhaust leaks, he fixed that. He uh, replaced part of the muffler on the back that was falling apart. So he's able to help us with some of these things. Some of it he just doesn't have the tools to put in the station. So we have to ship it over to Sam. But just to let you know, it's an old three. Mm -hmm. As I recall, it doesn't have very many miles, but never do none of our right, 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 miles. Mm -hmm. Never do. It's, it's the hours because we'll drive it five miles and we'll sit and pump and do things for ten hours. Yep. It's always our issue with these rigs. So, and this one's just basically it's, it's an old three. It's just that show its age. It's only twenty years old. We've got most of what we can get out of it. So we'll work through on that part. Of it. These are all. Mm -hmm. There's one more in here that's, what's this one for? This was for the forestry too. Um, they had to put a, an exhaust gasket on it. Colin couldn't do it, so he had to go over there. We bought the parts and pieces, but he couldn't get the bolts off. Typically, like how the exhaust work heats up, he had to heat them themselves to break them, so he had to go over to Sam so he could take care of them. So that was another one, but it's not going to be on the, on the purchase order side of things. Um, second one I want to put here, Caroline, Josh Hopkins in his paperwork, and they told him that he had joined us. That's this nice. is all his needed stuff, his design 994, his copies of his stuff. So okay. that's all in there for you. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Welcome back, right? You used to be on Josh started with us yep. uh, 22 years ago. Yep. He started in Elliott, he came to, he came to Rollinsburg. He got his time in, got some training, made himself marketable. He went over to Dover. He's been in 20, gone 23 years. And one of the guys that didn't forget where he came from, yeah. so he circled back. He's up there right now to teach CPR because he's an instructor. Yeah. So we're already using some of the skills that he has from that store right. to help us out. But mm -hmm. The other thing was, is Josh and I used to run the uh, CTC program that was running out of the fire station for the high school, mm -hmm. for the high school kids to get certified in that level one. So he just wanted to get back into teaching and things. He brings such a heap of knowledge and skills to help a lot of the new folks that we have that want to follow the path that he's done. So, mm -hmm. so he's an asset. He can drive, he can pump, and do everything that we need to have done. So Absolutely. couldn't say no. Absolutely. Find a home for you. Yeah. So that's his Very good. And Thursday night, Sean will be here okay. with the CFP because I have to be at the time Thursday. So I want to brief him a little bit when I get back there. He knows where we're going and got all the paperwork lined up for him. So he'll make the presentation and we'll go for Okay. And we'll take it easy now. <laughs> Sorry, you go for it. I'm not worried about Sean at all. <laughs> he'll do fine. He'll do fine. So he, he knows. We'll, we'll see what we'll yeah. see the paperwork. I'm going to explain to you some more. You're already on board. If you have any paperwork that you can submit ahead of time. We have done that.
did that. I don't know if it came to you. Do you need it? Yeah, it would be. I think a lot of it might have went to Suzanne. Oh, She's okay. The chairperson, right? She's the chair. We sent her some PDF files okay. on some of the information that she can peruse through on the air filling station, which is the top of our list. Yep. Extrication equipment, which is now kind of slid as a priority to the top of the list. So we have sent some of that stuff. Sean grabbed some of the files and sent it off so she okay. can review some of that stuff. If you want me to have it get sent to you, uh, uh, yeah, if you talk to Yeah, mm -hmm. if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. It's just it's useful to. Oh yeah, so you can have a send it to the whole committee, and the whole committee can read a little bit before the meeting. Who's yeah. the whole committee? Um, I don't even know all the players anymore. Mm -hmm. Changes all the time. Do we have a CIP? It's um, Kevin Haynes representing planning, and Suzanne representing budget, and Miles and I, and Judy Nelson representing the school. But is there a oh. CIP that we just sent it to one email and you're no, able to get it? There is a oh, group email oh, address. Right, yes, there is. Um, I believe it's CIP committee, but it pops up automatically, so I, I wouldn't want to say that intentionally tell you. I can't intentionally tell you. Let's see who can do it first. It is CIP committee at rollinsford.nh.us. There you go. So yeah. they will be, everyone will get it. They will send, send, send it to the whole committee. CIP committee. Oh, one word. Yes. VIP committee. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wrong shirt, NH. Dot NH. Dot US. Dot US. Busy sending emails. Yes. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I know about Tia. Tia must have. She's good. Yes, she can find that. Yeah. She's the other one that takes care of all that stuff. Have you seen the template today for that? Mm -hmm. um, so there's all my stuff right there. Okay. Good. Good. Let me know if you need help. Yeah, there hasn't been a date set for that yet. You're still figuring that part. The select board wants budgets in by the fifth. That they're going to talk later tonight about um, when they're going to ask the department oh, to, to present. Uh, yeah. Check your email. Yeah, yeah it's in your email. It's in your email. Yeah, I thought it was the fifteenth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but they have not decided on presentation okay. dates. Oh, that's fine. I thought it was the fifth and they could have back on the twelfth or almost that done. Like an extra meeting or something. Good. Or okay. schedule when you should do it. So yeah, we'll have to. It's all good. Uh, that summer budget schedule. I don't know if you saw my return email about that technical review. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. That representation. We'll see who does it, but we will have somebody here for that day. That would be great, thank you. Good. Is that it? Anything else for the fire department? Yep. I think we're good. Thank, thank you very you. much. All right. Excellent. Yeah. Nice to see you all. Okay. <laughs> I'm left out. We didn't have to go anywhere for those two days. Now. It's not good when it's like that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, too. Um, do we have anything for welfare? We're going to do it in non public. Um, we should do it in non public. Okay. Yeah, okay. Non -public bands, so we yeah. okay. So we'll wait to be non public for the end. All right. Um, Space Needs Committee. Um, I have received only one person that is looking to serve. Um, there are a couple of other potentials. Okay. Well, um, I haven't been that maybe you didn't. And I'm, I'm not sure if you have the same person. So, Carl um, Thomas. Okay, so he emailed the board. Charlie George would like to be on the committee. Oh, I didn't, get, I didn't hear from Charlie. Okay, okay, so he might have sent that just to me. Okay. So, okay. Um, and then um, someone else asked for the charge With today. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, somebody else asked me for the charge today and okay. is thinking about it. So okay. you may have a third. All right. Um, what did we ask for? Five? Four. 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 So I, I'm hoping we have three and then we we'll just okay. need one more. Okay. All so right. I think we can do it. I'm, I'm well, that's, that's good news. So, yeah. So you'll get back to me or have them get in touch with me? Yes. Okay.
um, should be the one. The one um, yeah, I was just going to say you might do that if you. Or, and well, I wasn't going to reply until I knew we had a committee to have. That was the thing. I only heard about one. So right, I okay. wasn't going to say, yeah. yes, you're on it, and then you're the only one. <laughs> so Well, I mean, okay, so I can, um, we can put it on the next agenda to do appointments and. I'll reply that we are on, I'm waiting for the other three names, you know, but consider yourself yeah. on at this point until, until you hear from me. But we'll be officially we'll next committed day. at the yeah. next. Yeah, yeah. okay, fine. I'll just reply so he knows I got it. Shared facilities director. Um, there's not an update on that because he went on vacation and I went on vacation and we're swapping and I'm not sure if he's back now that I'm back or if mm -hmm. he just went out. I'm not sure. So okay. I'm waiting to hear back from him. He's going to be providing us a report um, with his findings. So I will forward that along when I get it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how um, immediately that'll happen because he's, as much as he was going to try to make this a a one-day evaluation. He's been in here for little bits of time frequently, and he's taken some reading material home, and he's, I think, committed a lot more time than he thought he would because, mm -hmm. um, because it's his baby, but that he's interested. Mm -hmm. So I, I, don't, I don't know when we'll hear from him soon. Okay. Is he doing this on his own time or the school? He's doing, well, he's salaried. Oh, he's, okay. he's doing it on school time. I'm sure if it gets excessive, then we'll be he's having recording a to we'll his superiors yeah. all of his time. Yeah. So at some point, it will be the end. Or we'll, yeah. we'll have to do something with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Police consultants? It only happened at late this afternoon, but we received a contract. I forwarded it to you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't expect that you necessarily had time to read it. There is a copy here in paper form in case you're ready to sign it. I have not fully read it. Um, Miles did find at least mm -hmm. one typo. I think I did two at the, at the beginning, right? T-W-O instead of T-O. It's not that big of a deal. So these people that has finally come forward, I mean, how trustworthy are they that they'll do what they say they're going to do? Because it took them so long to respond to our request for a proposal. Well, so they want different payments. So you have payments to hold over them for information. And then, you know, they do have sample reports on their website indicating that they do produce work. Whether or not it's going to be as timely as we want it to be, I, I'm not completely confident about that either. I can only hope that having, you know, having a signed contract and a deposit will help motivate them. Mm -hmm. okay. um, do you want to defer it till next week or the next meeting, um, so we have time to read it in full? Yeah. 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 Thinking I, too, I, I'm not really prepared to sign something that I haven't really thoroughly um, looked at. So if we can um, um, put it in next, the next agenda, okay. And you can tell them that you know. Later, I'm going to have time to review it and we'll get back to them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Every source proposal. Okay, so they exist. I have them. There is one here on top. Should you want to do everything together, you can fill it out yourself to be the aggregate of all of them separately. Um, but otherwise, we have separate contracts for each of the facilities. It has the quote sheet on the front, which is about you know the synopsis of how the money works, okay. um, one for each facility, and then under that is the contract, which is the same as this contract here, but filled out for each facility. So, so doing each of the four contracts or doing three of the four, you know, you could do the separate contracts, or you can do it this way. I don't think there's an advantage of doing it. 
one way over another way, except that if you wanted to handle, you, you ask for them to be broken out because you can handle them differently if you want to. For the smaller facilities, you can choose to pay up front if you want for the cost in order to reap the benefit more immediately. Okay, can we? Can we get copies of these? So yes, we can that and bring it up at the next meeting as well because yeah, it's just too much to. But absolutely. Yeah, this, I want to make sure we really understand what we're signing. Yep. Yeah. So this gives you the, the price of what it's the total price that we're going to be paying, and it's going to give us the option of how paying it back. The front your, page is is the breakdown. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I forwarded to you. I think last week, the sort of blank contract um, for language. Mm -hmm. And then these came in all separately after that. Okay. So, um, and we found out that we can do this without having a warrant or something because of the payback. Of, because it's still, it's you're paying back through your line that you were already establishing in your budget anyway for years. You can. Yes. Okay. So you have more time for that you can afford them to. Right. All right. So we'll put it that as. Um, um, do you want well. these? Yeah, I'll take those. Do you want a paper copy? I can print them. Oh, okay. I can print them. Yeah. 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 Fancy yeah. with a printer? That works. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't feel like I'm going to have to sign them. Okay. RWSD concerns. Okay. So. As you, I asked for that to be put on because the select board is being called out many times on social media of, about helping with the problems, uh, problems with water district. And I don't know what we can and cannot do, and that's what we need the answers on. Because they're pleading to us that they are not getting answers from commissioners. And, and the commissioners are... Um, they are um, not following the law. They're having meetings without postings. They're having non-public that shouldn't be non-public, and they need to be called out on it. And um, and at least one person knows better. Out of mind. Um, the other two are fairly new at this, I think, but um, one of them knows better. So, what can we do? I will contact the inquiries about what the town's role could be. It's um, the, the, this facility, you, you are rate payers. Mm -hmm. So you, you have a role that way, and also, you know, the residents of the district are all residents of this town. Mm -hmm. um, so you have a right to care in that way. Whether or not you have any statutory authority, I would say. Mostly not. But that being said, if you have evidence of something that needs to be brought to light, then I would say it's well within your right as citizens and select board members to do that. And what is our right? What action can we do? I mean, they're meeting behind closed doors on non, for, and it's not a non-public issue. They're looking for looking at firms to come run the plant. That's not a non-public, and it's in, and it's not posted, and it's non, it's a non-public clearly because they're not posting it to let people know what's happening. So they're they're also meeting several times as a group, and those are they know that two people constitute constitute a forum. a forum, and they're meeting without, and they're not listening. To people. So I'm not. How, what can we do about that? The people have a right to know, and they're they're they are um, they're violating the right to know. So, what can we do there? Ask that question. To I, I will ask that question. It, it may be more than I know it to be. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the residents need to know what their rights are, and they're calling out for the selectmen. And if there's do, nothing else, then perhaps we can at least provide information about. Right, what that actions they, they can do. take, yeah. if we can't take it as any action. But um, 
they feel like they can do whatever they want, they want to do without any, anybody telling them anything. So That one email that we got earlier today yeah. was horrifying. It was the, horrifying. The, the, she sent photos of her water that comes out yeah. and yeah, I don't understand it. I don't know why she's getting iced tea out of her mouth. Yeah, exactly. And she has a, a, a young child, mm -hmm. very young. And it's, and, you know, it's, don't seem to be getting any action on that. The superintendent is trying his best, but he gets, I think, yes. told he can't do things, and not his job to do things, and so um, he only can do what he well, and the, and, the, and the fix for that issue is really a, a, a bond. No, that was the thing that they were, <clears throat> at the last meeting that I went to, they were talking about, you know, this is something that we can't do until March. Isn't there a way to have an emergency funding? Absolutely. I mean, you this is clearly court. an well, emergency on Willie Street, at least. It's Locust, Willie, and Prospect, right? Yes. Is the main it's issue. It's mostly there. Willie, but it mostly is those other Willie. places too, which includes the school, by the way. Yeah, exactly. So, isn't there a way that they can get emergency approval and emergency um, and apply for emergency funding of some sort through the state Absolutely. or through? Can you get a um, a bond, emergency bond? Sure. So you have to have saying they have to wait till March is un is not a correct answer. They're, but it's because they don't believe it's an emergency. That's the problem. But enough people in this town do believe it is. But it would have to be a special hearing, and it would have to follow those kinds well, of steps. Well, so, so to bonds do that. are a heavy lift. They mm -hmm. take a lot of work. They take mm -hmm. a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, they would have to hire help mm -hmm. for um, getting that to happen. Yeah. Um, in addition to petitioning the superior court for the right for a special and you know district meeting mm -hmm. to authorize them mm -hmm. to um, pursue that. Pursue that. Yeah. So it, um, it's a lot of work. But you know they they have no problem buying a pickup truck that wasn't in their budget, and they have and cell phones that wasn't in their budget. So if, I don't know if they got that or not, but maybe the money they had for that they can apply towards this. I mean they'd be they might even be able to do a portion of it, depending on what you know they they find, but I don't think they're looking. That's the problem. What was the cost of? Well, the whole thing was a million. It's, it's going to, between 800 and 1.2. Yeah. And, and it depends on how they do it, and whether that, you know, they do that whole horseshoe shape, or yeah. just, you know, one section. Well, I sense. think that was just Willie, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. it, it, it? It's, It might be. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it might be. I don't know. According to the, the presentation by the um, engineering firm, oh, okay. the, the total was 1.2, but I think they were they're doing some lesser things. Willie was really the top of the conversation at that meeting. But um, something needs to be done. People can't wait till March for that. You know, I mean, I don't know what. I just feel for them, you know, and and that part of it seems isolated. Like I I don't have discoloration in my water. Do you? No, it's because Willie Street is in this yeah. gully, yeah. And, and so whether you flush it this way or flush it that way, it's really hard to mm -hmm. flush it completely. So it's got, you know, it's these old cast iron pipes that forever have had water sitting in them, mm -hmm. and so they've got a lot of. Um, degradation on the inside. And the superintendent tried to show the commissioners a photo of it and they refused to look at it that night, which was phenomenal. So. But, um, all right, so you'll find out what, what action will, that we I can take on the behalf of the residents of the town, and I appreciate it. I just, I want to, I want to, you know, just bring up a point, though, that um, we can ask legal inquiries hypothetical situations, mm -hmm. hypothetical questions. Um, they work for their membership. We are members. It might get sticky for them, and I'm not sure how much they're going to give us answers in that the Water Sewer District are also members. 
So, you know, it, we, we have to keep it very hypothetical, and if we get into too much detail, they may recuse themselves, in which case they're going to be into private town council for answers. So we'll see. I, you know, I'll approach okay. the topic. I just okay. want to, you know, I, I, I'm not sure that I'm going to get really far with it. Okay.
Um, as soon as I get it, I'm going to work with Dion budget Thursday. Um, but Dion and Ryan um, probably does team. Um, so, you know, we'll get it to you as soon as we can. And then, um, I don't have an issue with that. I think okay. we'll have enough to, to work, work get going it. on, and then, then as soon as we get it ready. I mean, the f I, you know, whether it was the 5th or the 15th, I think, was a request whether or not. Okay. So we'll get it, like I said, we'll get it as soon as we can, but yeah, great, I appreciate that. All right. Okay. SRPC vacancies. I, just saw some. Um, I sent you yeah. an email today. Um, it was a forward from the Stratford Regional Planning Commission that we now have two vacancies because Mike was holding one of those spots. So. Um, they are looking for two people to be appointed representing Rollinsford. They do not have to be public officials of any kind. So that doesn't have to happen tonight. Um, they just want people involved in um, regional transportation and policies regarding regional transportation. Can we put something up through the um, advertising that we have two positions? Miles, are you interested in being in the Um, I, I wouldn't mind, but as I recall, they meet um, Friday mornings. Yeah, and, and that's a sticking point for a lot of people. Yeah. yeah, I can't really commit to it. It's monthly or? Once a month, Once a month. I believe 9 o'clock on Fridays. And for like hours or? I think it's two hours. Mm -hmm. I've, I've not been. Mm -hmm. um, well, I. It's in Rochester too, right? It is. She's um, killing me here. I know. I know. Is that, is that the, the county? No. No, it's, it's in, in Rochester. Rochester. Um, by the high school. By the house high school? It's even further. I thought it was down by. No, they're, they're in the Human yeah. yeah. Services Resource Building next to the high school. Okay. Um, I might take a spot, but why don't you advertise? We can advertise. There are two. When is the next meeting, do we know? Um, it's the first Friday of every month. Don't be pressured by that. So that's next week? Yeah. Yes, um, yes, second, okay. Can we share a spot, him and I, and then have somebody else? Or would we have to continually reappoint one or the other of us? I don't know. I'm sure they would prefer somebody consistent because you're yeah. learning about. Then you have the other person as a consistent one. Yeah. So I can take morning shots instead of the afternoons. Because um. I have Friday afternoons, I can take that in the morning. But I, I can. How much do you love planning? <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel well, like, well, you know, yeah. though, we, we can advertise it, but we have to appoint someone to the select board, and that person might be willing to step into it as well, maybe. It's right, it doesn't work. So let's not point, you know, let's put something out now. there, and then we'll see what we do with the So in the meantime, I'll plan to go on the second. Um, I'm off that day. I don't think I'm doing anything. Um, yeah. Just to have some. Would you all like to appoint Miles, and then if it gets to be too much, then yeah, you absolutely. Know. And then we'll we'll still put it out there for the second okay. position. So I'll make a motion that we appoint Miles to the Stratford Planning, Stratford, Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Planning Commission yes. Um, Guess I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed. Okay. Good. And then you'll post for a vacancy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Miles. I'm sure. That's what I said. Should have that to my phone. Public service, New Hampshire. Public service? Yes. Uh, so, oh, yes. I saw that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to know what to do with this one, which is why I didn't just put it in the board folder, but I thought you might want to think about it. And, and feel free, by all means, to ask him to come in and talk to you about it if you want. Um, but I'm not if, really, you know, I... If you don't say something, he's just going to go ahead and do it. Well, he's already doing it. Well, he's... Well, he's he already started it. He said, let me know if you want me to stop. So he's already 
gone down that. Did you read that one, Maya? No, I didn't. Okay. So, yeah. um, Chad, Chad. Robert, on behalf of Avatar, sent a letter to the select board letting them know that he has initiated a mediation, essentially, with PSNH regarding their property tax abatement that was denied for 2017. So they appealed the denial. Mm -hmm. um, this happened all over the state that right. um, they are assessed inconsistently because power lines go everywhere and they want to pay some kind of flat consistent rate for their properties. Mm -hmm. um, so their abatements got denied in lots of places and it went to BTLA and now it's in the courts and DRA came up with a recommended rate I'm, um, and that's where, that's about as much as I know. Mm -hmm. um, it has not been officially settled, it's still in the courts. Chad is suggesting that having it linger in the courts might get expensive. Um, whereas, you may, you know, they, they may, but he thinks that you would, you would be able to settle it out of court. And he has done that with other communities. So it's just about how much, um, it, it might be worth a conversation with him because yeah. DRA came up with something on one end of the spectrum for how the value should work. Mm -hmm. Avatar is kind of on the other end, or, or kind of in the middle, like toward the other end, but kind of in the middle. And so, you know, what, what's reasonable? So it's in the courts. So where, how would we be hit with legal fees? Part of being the part class of action defense of... So we would have to pay the expense, our portion of the expense for the class action suit. Potentially. So you're adding your name to the class action suit, which we're not added yet. We haven't signed up to be part of the suit that's in court right now. Um, not to my, well, so we're part of this conglomerate group of towns, mm -hmm. but we have not paid for any legal expenses, and I'm not sure, we have been, um, I've sent you emails of law firms who are soliciting our mm -hmm. membership in this, mm -hmm. and so far we have not We've done, done that. Right. Um, but that doesn't mean, I, I don't know how that's going to eventually work out that we're going to benefit from a lawsuit that we're not going to pay for. I, and so, I mean, See, I mean, if the class action happens and the court makes a decision and it's to benefit the towns, how would we not be part of that? Even though we well, haven't paid the legal fees. Yeah, they take the yeah. fees out of the settlement, usually. Um, usually, but you still have to, in some form, agree to be part of yeah, the class action to suit. So, I'm not uh, sure. If you have to opt in or opt out. Um, I don't know. So, you know, I would want more information that way. There's definitely parts of this I don't understand. So, what do we stand to gain if we settle? He had a savings in potential legal fees because oh. you know he believes that the settlement might be less expensive than what an ongoing trial might incur in legal fees. Um, he had a dollar amount though. There might be a paper line with that. In here? Or folder. You might find a paper letter in that blue to your right oh, there. Sorry. I think I put it in the seat there. Yeah. No. No, it's not there. It's it. His letter has yellow. April? It's been going on for years. Yes. With Chad? Oh Has yes. It? Okay. So I don't think what did you we all... decide to do it? Well, there's an email I found that says April though. Which is saying 
um, it's that HB 700. Yeah. Uh, that's where they're saying um, the settlement value is based off of using the HB 700 current draft. Right. Right. And he thinks it would be in our favor to do a settlement amount. He's saying that he believes the town could settle for all the appeals four years with no interest at thirty-five to fifty thousand range. That's not the same thing. Yeah, I'm not sure he's saying the same thing monetarily. No, that's yeah, that's. Well, I think bottom line is that we, we need to have them come in and really try to explain to us why. But I wouldn't have them come to the one down at the library. Yeah. Are we pushing it to go that much longer with him? Well, we can have him just not go any further until... Tell them to hold on what we have. Until um, yeah. Or maybe he can write um, a really explicit email, like to try to explain. Okay. Yeah, that's just, I don't, I don't follow it. Well, it, he's saying that the legal fees could cost us thirty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. If we settle now, we get somewhere between seventy-five hundred and twenty-six thousand. Mm -hmm. That basically what he's. That was pretty much so. It was better to settle than it is to be part of a class action, I guess, with thirty-five thousand. Yeah, if you can just well, clearly see right. like, the you know, potential you, upside and the potential downside. Right, so legal and fees may or may not get you more money. What's the net effect of that? Right. And, right. and, and there's no real way to know because... Well, it could, yeah. You never know how these things are going to work out. So do you want to see him or do you want him to be more detailed with what I think if you can put it in writing... And then if you still have questions, like when you get back. the email, you can yep. just email me and say, it's not enough for me. I'm okay. All right. Why don't we do that? Okay. Um, and so if you settled, you would come off of the thing that's in the courts right now. Then. Right. And, and there are some towns that are doing that. Well, he says that he's him. Yeah. successfully negotiated yeah. for some time. Okay. All right. Yeah, I would ask him to um, okay. better some of this information. All right. Anything else on that? No, yeah, okay. good. Thank you. It's a court of Pony Bridge construction. So this was about Mr. Lowry's I have head. no idea what he was even describing. Um, on Rollins? From this? I can't tell from <laughs> that. <laughs> okay. Um, on on Rollins Road, as you're heading toward Janados, um, so if you are um, Which near Rollins Turgeon Road Lane, I'm sorry, so near if, you're, Lane, if, yeah. you're, if you're passing Turgeon and you're yeah. going toward Janados. Yeah. You don't. You're not. So. Janko. Janko. You're sorry, Janko. Um, you can turn right on Clement. Don't turn right on Clement, but instead across from Clement, there's a oh, dirt road there. Oh, I know. There's a farm. Right. Yes. Okay. That's what he's calling Ham Road. Oh. Okay. And that road goes all the way behind the house right there. Right. Jane and there's Ann's an old house. barn there, or it was. And long ago. Back there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So if you follow what used to be that road, it goes down to the left, and then. Way down on the left at the bottom of the hill, along, over the railroad tracks, is a bridge. Okay. So if you're coming away from Janco, it's on the right. After that house, yeah. that's by the road, you go down the hill, and on the right, you can see a structure over the railroad tracks. Okay, so are they proposing to take it down? No. They mm -hmm. want it's not to become the railroad. No. Okay. They are just not allowing. It's their property. It's so, the railroad's property. Right. Okay. They're not. Oh, and, you know, it's very restricted what you can do on and around railroads, and okay. they have not allowed maintenance to it. And so now it's not, it hasn't been passable for quite some time, and now the property owner really wants to um, renovate it, just replace the decking. It's, been, it's structurally sound, except for the decking material, and they just want to replace the decking. Does it, go, it goes over the tracks? Or yes. The does you go up and over it? Yes. The train goes under it? Yes. Okay. Steps, walkway steps. Okay, so because it's going over the railroad tracks, the owner of the land, or who wants to fix it, can't because it's the going over the that. railroad. Right. Railroad regulates that. It's and so teams. decades ago, I guess, the railroad said there will be no maintenance and you will discontinue the use of the bridge, essentially. But it's a walking bridge, not a driving bridge. Correct. Okay. Well, it was a it was a it was a kettle. It was a, it was a 
Livestock. To cross over the railroad. Okay. Vehicles. Mm -hmm. And then until they put some of the boys vandalized that a few years back and they put and they put logs over there so the vehicles came over there. Okay. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Go see yeah, it. Great. It's it's it, you can't see it very well from the road, but you can tell some things out there. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so he's looking to get what is he looking for? He's looking he wants a letter of support from the, from the town, which I'm happy to draft for you, that yeah. just says the select board empathizes with the property owner's right to want to traverse both sides of his property on either sides of the railroad. It's a historic structure, and, and you all support his desire to maintain it and ask the railroad to allow for that to happen. Okay, so how would that impact the railroad that they wouldn't allow it for... I mean, I don't have much food. It, it, it may or may not. It is just the request of the property owner that you mm -hmm. such a letter. So, mm -hmm. if you are supportive of that idea, I'll draft the letter and then let you know when it's ready. You may have at some point yeah. sign it. And who's the one with Mango? Um, Raleigh Janeiro's. Raleigh Janeiro's. Mm -hmm. That's inherited property, right? Yeah. So, there's nobody that lives on that property. Correct. Okay. So, Raleigh Janeiro's is the one that wants to do this work. Um, on, 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 well, he would be the property owner, so he would yes. be doing it. Well, not physically. To no, 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 but he would done. be paying for it to be done. The town is not under any obligation to pay for that. No, no, no. It, he, it, they're not looking for any financial They're support. just looking for our support to Over allow him to do it. And, and, and the railroad. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm good with that. Are you good with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's a structure where you would say, right? Mm-hmm. Do you want to file that in the door? <laughs> That's All great. Right. I really appreciate that you did that. Yeah. yeah. All right, DMV printer. So um, I didn't see that. I need to follow. It's just a placeholder. I haven't followed up with her about where's her purchase order. Um, I did talk to Tom LaBelle, mm -hmm. and the black and white one at Staples for $1,100 is the least expensive it's client option. It is cheaper than the colored one. Yes. Not by much though. It's still eleven hundred dollars. It's not by much, but it is it's like a hundred and something dollars. But the the ink would be cheaper to have for sure. Black, so yes. in the long picture of things. Okay, so you um so until she gets the PO in here, it's on yeah. it's in her hands. Right. Okay. It's a black and white. A uh, black, I mean. Okay. okay um Comcast long-term contract. There's no news on that, and, and it could be removed as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's just about keeping the board informed of any movement um, from town council. So far, there isn't any, except to say um, he was gonna he was gonna reach out to Mike Billis, who works for Dover and has experience with Dover through Dover about how they manage their Comcast contract. He was going to do some research um, through Mike Gillis. Um, Tom LaBelle also um, indicated in that email that I sent to you today that mm -hmm. um, the town is moving to Fairpoint, uh, rather the school is moving to Fairpoint for its own internet mm -hmm. needs. Mm -hmm. um, and so he's going to sort of suss out what our internet needs are. The DMV dedicated line is a more intense data load than other facilities, other means in town. Mm -hmm. um, but it may be in a negotiation point. Of, but he know. had said in, the, in that email that that computer wasn't going to be considered part of that. I'm, that I'm, I'm sorry. The DMV, print, uh, the DMV computer wasn't, but it wasn't part of that. Part it wouldn't be part of changing. Changing. Did I miss it? Did I, I think miss you're it? missing something. So, so all, so all I'm trying to say is that um, town council is working on evaluating our Comcast contract, which mm -hmm. dates back to the early '70s, so that you can get a rather than re-upping it, you can, you know, next year get a new contract with Comcast. Through that, he's going to do some research about um, what what other towns are, and cities are getting 
through their Comcast agreement and, and to see if you might want to try to negotiate similar benefits. Um, I think it's notable what Tom is going to find out about the data requirements for our use of internet here because it might play into what the town might want to negotiate with, for, for to have within that contract, if that makes sense. That was the Microsoft office that was going to be computed in Yes, so, so, so it was in the same email, just, but it was yes, sorry, a totally yes, different thing. I understand yeah. where yeah. you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that, um, yeah, so he's looking into it. Um, so I will let um, town council know that when I know better. So you also have to get his information for the fire library and township. Well, Tom LaBelle is going to get all that information. That? Okay. Yeah, he's going to gather that, and then and I'll help him gather that. Okay. All right, but the contract is kind of like at this point. Well, you don't want to sign anything to you just said whether or not you did. Because is that all you have? No, you have your your phone lines aren't with them. Comcast. No. So all you have here for Comcast is the internet. Yes. Arch town hall or request? Um, so we received an email that Arch would like to have a historic tour um, to include the upstairs of this building. It, it wouldn't be an enormous number of people. It can handle the people. It's just about permission for them to do so and, um, and providing access because it would be on the weekend. So, does the board support the idea of that? And if so, I think between one of the many key holders, we can arrange to make sure it's open. How many people are we talking about? I don't know. I've, I've been on a couple of those tours myself. They're never more than like 20, 25 people. Um, but you can certainly put a limit on it if you want to put a limit on it, or we can inquire. Um, can we have them sign some sort of waiver, absolving us of mm -hmm. responsibility? I mean, that's really the only way we feel comfortable. Okay. Uh, Are mean, you concerned because of the condition upstairs? Just because the access to it. And, like I've been up there, and it's mm -hmm. scary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I, I'm not sure how that would hold up if someone fell through a window or, I don't know. Well, I don't... Um, it's been a long time since I've been up there, but it was scary when I went up there many years ago. It's structurally perfectly sound mm -hmm. for not a ton of people to walk around. You know, mm -hmm. the, the county came in and, you know, moved a bunch of stuff around and cleared it out, so there's a lot less weight up there now and it very well accommodated all those county people in addition to that weight that problem. Yeah. Um, it, it's not structurally a problem. It's, it's dirty. It doesn't have it does have a railing going up mm -hmm. on both sides. So um, what is that? I mean is it just a pile of stuff up there that's no. just there's nothing up there anymore. You got this. There is else. stuff, it's not a lot of stuff. There are some file cabinets that I'd like to have moved down, police bicycles, old cubicles people don't use. Mm -hmm. um, there is a um, there's a small room with mostly empty file cabinets and a lot of old files. It is old file storage. Mm -hmm. But out of sight? If mm -hmm. it's in another room. You can certainly shut that so door. They're, you're, yes. you're just, they're just going out to look at the auditorium. Mm -hmm. To look Pretty at the place where there were a lot of functions in town. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is part of the history of this community mm -hmm. that a lot of things mm -hmm. happened up there. So, want to leave it on the agenda and find out about the liability part of it? Um, sure. Or how many well, people are... When did they want to do this? 
In August or September sometime. Oh, okay. So we have um, yeah. Okay, so we'll leave it on the agenda as well. I'm generally, in, in okay, but I just want to make sure I cover our bases. Sure. I thought we did the building. I was just thinking you about did, You side. did, you did, okay. I apologize. Yeah, I thought that's 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 that. the agenda. Yeah. And so, yes, building permit schedule is even addressed. Policies? Are we at all prepared for that? Come oh. on. <laughs> I'm not prepared for anything, frankly. Mm -hmm. It's Monday. Mm -hmm. I just got that. Um, but there are, um, if you if you want to um, review them. Well, that's what I was doing when I was in late was, but I, I'm not at all prepared. Okay. Uh, yeah. are, I mean, are you Miles? No. Okay. No. If you're working yes, on them on your own and reading them, I think yeah. that's the bigger yeah. work. You know. And we want to like, pick one. To really concentrate on, and then and we'll remove and the others from the agenda. Well, no, leave them on there. Just let's say, yeah. which one do you really feel is the most important one, and that kind of well, puts the priority to us. Think our you think welfare needs to be just not even on here. Given we can certainly make it welfare. Um, well, but just just given that we now don't need every single week, and something might come up. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that is a point. Um, one of the things about now meeting every other week is addressing the things that are going to prevent you from sustaining that. Right. And welfare will be one of those things. Okay, so do we have a welfare one? Because that's not one of them. That's it's on the drive. Okay. Um, so you can look for it on the drive. We actually have an approved welfare policy. Okay. Which is you do. adjusting. Yes, it's called guidelines, welfare guidelines. Okay. Okay. Um, but yes, All right. it's signed and it's on the drive. All right, and so then the next one, um, is it purchasing the Board of Selectmen, in your opinion? I, I like Board of Selectmen because it just regulates how you all operate so that there is okay. no, you know, question about that. And I think it would be helpful for whoever the next person is okay. to know what they're... All right, so let's, we'll start working on welfare as a number one and Board of Selectmen as a number two. All right? Yep. All right. Okay. Um, town administration, board member activity and updates. So since we last met, I uh, we had a CIP meeting. Um, the police came and presented um, not a huge number of asks, but um, once, once we have everything together, we'll um, present it. Um, CIP, I think that's all um, from the last two weeks. And then next week, or this week, there's another CIP meeting. Fire and highway and transfer are coming. And then Tuesday the 30th is highway safety. I think that's. I had um, rec last week. Um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, if you need some work, let's just put it that way. You know, I mean, I think they're doing okay. I think, you know, we're over halfway through um, the program. The program itself is good. It's just more about, as we talked about before, handle the money and getting things documented and those kind of things. I think we need some we just need some work on that. Um, do you need any help with anything? Um no. Um I think I think they I think they're okay. I mean she comes once a week for it to you, right? And you're seeing better with the cash. Better I, was, <laughs> I wasn't here last week. Okay. I don't know if she dropped off cash. Got I picked up time cards on Friday. I don't know what day she does the cash. I it's know. not consistent, and oh, it's not okay. even always the directors. It's been more the assistant director. Okay. Um, I picked up the time cards and the, the one invoice there for Melanie Friday after, late Friday afternoon when they got back from the pool. She didn't say that she had cash to turn in, so I didn't. What, what's the cash from? Uh, they're they're uh, pizza People sales buy pizza and, and snacks. snacks. Yeah. 
and any like t like extra t-shirts yeah. or money yeah. that they have. Not owe. huge amounts, but you know, she would be staying in a location mm -hmm. for periods of time. Um, so we talked a lot about that um, money um, at our meeting, making sure that we follow rules and all of that. Um, so we're going to start working on that. That um, very early in the stages. Um, I'm going to be working with D Friday on budget, their budget, and um, you know, just just saying that we don't. I don't always agree with what how they believe that their budget can be spent. That's the way that so we can have a conversation about it. You know, um, yeah, call me and we can talk about that. And it's actually just right here. Um, <clears throat> I think that they believe that because it's in the budget, they have the right to spend the whole amount, even though it doesn't make sense. If you had 10 people, if you quoted 10 people at $225, but only five people are going and you're still paying $225, I find that I have a problem with that. Um, because you're paying double the price because you don't have the numbers. This is team. Right, I got it. And they're that. saying that, that it's well, in the budget and it's part of their program. So we well, get so it the there other side of it is you have to be really careful about if people are signing up that they bought X, yep. then you have to provide X. And that's what they're saying, but I have a problem with that in, so, in one fact. And, and, and just, I mean, I, I wouldn't do that in my own person. I wouldn't pay $44. If I budgeted 22, you know what I mean? Because uh, per you, person, I wouldn't well, do that in absolutely. my own personal budget. So I consider what I do here is what, what I do with myself. I wouldn't do that. I, I don't disagree with you, but I think it's but something think that has to be addressed for next and year. And those are the things that we need to talk about because what they're saying is because they when they when they planned this event, they were looking at the whole picture. However, on that particular week, on that particular day, there's only five students going to be. Right. at there versus so, 13 that they have. So this is part of family young obligations or whatever. So, so you just cancel it. You know, you can't well you cancel. can't, she's telling me. She's saying that they have to do it because it's, it was advertised as being that. But what it should have done is, like before now, they should have probably maybe flipped it to be on another day when they have more kids. Right. That's that what they, that's what day. they, that's what or, I'm saying. We need to be a little only, more proactive about yes, some or only things. do activities that get priced per each rather than a flat amount, or right. find what find ways to make it workable. Because this one, they won't open the doors for less than that price. And then it, we were going to um, offer it to the higher kids in Ra the higher age kids in Raleigh, but then you got to supply the support staff to bring those kids. Which we can't afford to lose because you know, we only take five. So you, it just it doesn't work. Um, I, it doesn't work well. You know, it depends how many on that day, but you can't make a guarantee because you don't know what your enrollment is going to be for that day for your student counselor ratio for Raleigh. Agreed. Yeah, I would say it's it's part of a rent policy that needs to be created, and yeah. it's part of. What I hope that you will talk to not just one of the co-chairs, mm -hmm. but the whole committee right. about when you're doing budget planning right. for next year. Right. Because um, they do have to provide whatever people think they were buying. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want and to have false advertising. Yeah. But at the same time, that's not revenue neutral if that is still the directive of this board. Right. Right. But in and what she said to me is, is, we have to do it because this is, we told them we were going to do it, but so we're paying twice as much as sending half the amount of kids that you were budgeted. You know. So I think it could be solved pretty easily if you say, in the, I didn't see the literature, but you say, if we get enough people, we'll do these things. Mm, um, yeah. Instead of right. blanket, oh, we're taking a trip to the White House. Like, yeah, yeah. No. So those are the things that we have to work on. Well, and, and rearranging the schedule. It, yeah, you know, or you rearrange the schedule. To, so when you have more people in the, on a, a day, that's when you can do it. Because this is this is a Dover, New Hampshire program. This this definitely could be very quickly. Well, and and that doesn't sound like um, you're 
you're running, you, you, like running a camp for five people is, you know, um, to think about the amount of time and energy, and it's not always five people, no. it's five people for that week. And for I, and or I that day. Or for if that day. If it's that day, not necessarily that week, if it's that day, it's only five people. But, but there's how 13 in team. Okay, but, but even still, how many kids are enough kids to go through all of the work that's involved mm -hmm. in making the program what it needs to be yeah. and have it run? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying that 13 it doesn't qualify, mm -hmm. but I think it's something that the committee and the board really ought to think mm -hmm. about because yeah. it's, it's a lot of work making all of these things happen mm -hmm. and not just for them. You know, maybe their efforts really ought to be better concentrated on wow. Raleigh that still also needs yeah. some administrative help. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because of their budget, they're, they're coming into budget. So, I mean, it's not that they're doing anything wrong. Because, I mean, but in this, things like this bother me, you know, that we're paying twice as much so to have So those five kids this. pay, right, for their... They all pay for that. It's event. part of their tuition. It's part of their tuition. This event was part of their tuition. So they all pay, just uh, some are choosing not to go. For who knows the reason. Yeah. It could be family vacations, could be whatever. Well, and you can think of it that way. Yeah. That you're really buying ten tickets and five people are choosing not to use them. Yeah. If that makes you feel better. Well, and then it's not I just have, money, yeah, that money. Well, but, yeah. you know. But I would have hoped that they would have tried to flip it with another program that they could have had the, the ten. Yeah. yeah. You know? That's what I was hoping that they would have done. But now they're getting closer to the end of the program because they're one week shorter than Raleigh is. So there's a lot of negotiation, but it's not a surprise either. You know, that they didn't Well, and is that just because that date really doesn't work for families? Or is it because kids are not really excited about that? I don't know. I think she, event. she didn't say. Uh, because yeah. that would be a yeah. consideration whether or not they, they want to do that again. Consider next that next year. Yeah. 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 So anyway, um, but yeah, there's there's definitely going to be some improvement on you know, procedure and and um, discussing trips more in depth about what the cost is going to be. The fish cat was really it, the the game okay. was uh, yeah. We, we no longer will I hope we will no longer have something that people have to come up and pay for in addition to right. Um, it needs to be part of the registration process when you sign your child up and say you want to go or you don't. You don't have to go, but if you don't want to go, you don't. And but if you do, then you pay a part of it all in, one, all in one time. They shouldn't be doing that at Raleigh. You know? I just hope that as soon as they're done with their budget, or maybe while some are doing, you know, working on budget, that other people are working on writing their job descriptions mm -hmm. for their things that mm -hmm. they do for that committee to make yeah. these programs possible because yeah. um, they've got a lot of work ahead of them. Yeah, I think so too. Writing the program. Anyway, so that was for HEC. <laughs> and we're working on the budget for next year. Um, what is this? I think that's what I have. I budget this week. This week, Wednesday night. Um, budget mm. review. I sent it out to them. Yeah. And, um, oh, do you have a revenue? Revenue is done. I've, I've got um, Chuck working on making a nicer report out of it. Okay. So they're not going to have it ahead of time, or not very much ahead of time. But um, I'll, I'll get you something that you can provide for them. It's okay. the, the, what, what's going to be interesting about revenue, which is always interesting about revenue, is that our um, budget categories don't match our income categories, mm -hmm. and so you have yeah. to add apples to equal oranges. Yes. And yeah. so um, it's a discussion point, but I think it's more important that you all can evaluate the income lines, the way that we bring in money, because it's more understandable than miscellaneous revenue. Mm -hmm. and, and how is miscellaneous revenue doing, and what does that really mean? Because, you know, that's not a very helpful Category. Right, right. For example. So, so anyway, yeah, so we'll have yeah, that. Something. And that's all I had going for this week. All right, town administrator update. Um, it seems pretty clear, given that we're having trouble 
communicating with the vendor that the portico is not going to happen this year. Okay. Uh, we will try to get, we're still working on getting a quote so that we can budget for it better for next year. Okay. Um, I'm hopeful that we can get at least whatever structurally needs to happen done or separated out so that we can maybe do it more quickly. Um, the vendor indicated that it's structurally a 7 out of 10. It's not going to fall right this minute, but it's deteriorating and needs some attention in the not too distant future. Um, but he's busy and been largely unresponsive to requests for information and quotes. Is that money for the portico just designated for a portico? It's in town hall maintenance. You budgeted for, you know, it was part of your calculation for how you came up with what should go in town hall maintenance, but it is um, not specifically otherwise earmarked. You can rearrange it if you want to rearrange it. And we can certainly do other town hall maintenance. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. Is there something that needs to be done or should be done Well, in replace of? So one of the things we could do, um, Richard's trying to find a different vendor. He found a vendor to give a quote who doesn't want to do the work to repair the windows so that they move freely up and down and lock easily. That can be accomplished on this floor for about $2,500. We would need to get a quote from a person who's actually willing to do the work. But it's a ballpark idea that that, I, I would say, would be the first thing to do because it would impact energy costs. So that would help seal them. It would help in the winter, like we, we that we could open and close them fairly. And and we don't lock them open. in the winter. Like not all of them can lock, and yeah. that's a problem. Yeah. Plus, people would certainly enjoy fresh air more often if it wasn't such a yeah wrangle. Okay, and um, what about that the walk-in area with the peeling thing coming off? The, I mean, is there any way that we can get that fixed and repainted? The fire. The fire. Yeah, but. Is that is the water problem part of the portico issue? Or? Um, no. Okay. The water issue's been resolved. Oh, okay. Which so caused the pump peeling paint. So that that's not yeah, a factor that, anymore. But yes. Um, it's rather shabby. I will see if you can get a quote on that as well. Okay. Um, and that that window in there in that on that wall has a lot of leaking. Did that get resolved too? It wasn't the window that was leaking. It was from above. It was part of the whole, the tower. Oh, okay. Leaking once upon a time. Okay. So, so there that's has been not resolved. been recent leaking okay. in that room at all. Oh, okay. Very good. All right. So it should be fine. So I'll have him. So possibly those two, that. maybe those two. I, I think we can certainly do something. A little bit at a time. Yes. Yeah. And those, yeah, I think would be. Those well, once we have the report, that maybe well, right. We're going to have to order some filters for um, the AC units mm -hmm. minimally. That won't be a lot of money. Um, we should... Um, and probably the boil, too. Or did we well, know that that was done? Right? Um, he, he did that. So I think we're under... I, I believe he did that, so we're under control with it. He'll provide a report with right. all the regular to-dos that mm -hmm. we need to do. Um, but the other thing is, the board approved a purchase order with Townsend for maintenance, a maintenance contract for all of the different units, AC and boiler. Um, I have not sent out the, AC, the money, like I have not paid those ACs yet because um, Mr. Fortier is suggesting a different vendor given the fact that the ACs have been misbehaving for a number of years consistently mm -hmm. and they don't, and, and their filters were really clogged and disgusting, like they've never been changed. So right. I'm hoping when the chief meets with Townsend, we'll come to find out what we've been paying for in this service contract. And not been receiving, or and maybe it was part of that. Or, with that. Yeah. Um, and so I, I may be suggesting a different service contract with a different vendor. Okay. Um, but at least, at the very least, cleaning up the coils and replacing the filters of the ACs is another way to yeah. spend money. All right. This place. So, so we, yeah, that sounds good. So you know, there's plenty to do. It's it's just about identifying. We're still identifying costs for mm -hmm. options. Okay. 
Um, I'm meeting on Thursday with Representative Rico, who's going to look at um, the planning files and zoning files and provide a cost estimate for scanning. Okay. Um, it's going to be a lot of money, mm -hmm. and it's not the first place that I would suggest we start digitizing information and process. Um, but I still think it's important to know, you know, each each chunk of process, each each um, department of information that we have is going to have its own digitization process. Um, while that is the biggest storage. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the biggest storage problem, it's the biggest visibility problem, and it's the biggest need for information access as far as my, my office goes. You know, I would love to be able to, you know, know what the right of way on Stockdale is and when was that created, you know, some certain things like that. Um, it's important to know how much that's going to cost. Um, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen quickly or all at once. We're still exploring how we're going to play this out, but it, this is the assessment. That's going to be Thursday. Okay. Um, so CIP this week, and then budget. Do you, would you like for me to attend budget? Would that be helpful? Or do you feel like you've got that well covered? Um, I, think, I think I'm okay. So I'm You can collect questions and I can. provide um, answers later. I put a lot of notes in the column of one-time purchases and, you know, um, what certain things were. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, oh, okay. I would like to let review revenues with you before we send Absolutely. it out, though, I'm gonna so make sure to I understand you. those. Yes, I'm gonna send them to you, so um, you But, yeah, I think I'm okay. I mean, we can always get back to them, so I'm not. Okay. Um, have the night off. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did zoning meet? Oh, thank you for that. Yes, the zoning board met. They did grant the variance to the subdivision um, proposal on the variant of Silver Street um, with a lot of conditions. They, um, oh, okay. The notice of okay. decision is not yet final, but it's got a lot of conditions. Okay. They have noticed that proposal for planning for the August meeting. However, um, I am arranging a technical review committee prior to the planning board meeting. Um, the date I'm proposing is August 6th, which is the planning board night. So there's not going to be enough time to get notes back to the planning board. And so while I anticipate that the developer who will be invited to the technical review committee will be very eager to get the planning board um, moving. I, I want to make sure that the planning board has time to digest the concerns and questions of the department heads who are going to review this proposal. So um, they, they, are they, they are very um, tenacious and eager in trying to keep process moving so that they can mm -hmm. get started as soon as possible, but it's not going to be um, decided at the August meeting because um, technical review will have their time. So um, John Krebs and Tom Clark and um, perhaps the engineer um, at their expense, um, we'll see about that, um, and the applicant and department heads and myself, um, so that everybody can weigh in on whether or not the road's big enough and they have any concerns about how this is going to go. Yep. and. Um, whether or not they want to see any revisions or make comments for the planning board to consider. Um, that's the 6th. Well, so far it's the 6th. I've got most people confirmed for it. So, so that'll be in place of the planning board meeting? Or? No, it'll be earlier in the day, oh, okay. 10 a.m. Everybody oh, okay. will meet, discuss. Um, Sarah will be there drafting minutes so that there will be an official record of that meeting to become part of the planning file and share it with the planning board so that they can hear essentially from all the department heads about what their feelings are. Um, because it's, it's going to have a significant yeah. impact out there. And it's eventually going to be a town road to be plowed and maintained by the town. Well, 
onto the property, onto mm -hmm. the existing property, no? It's going to have a name, right? No, it's not going to be well, silver, silver list. No, they're, um, they're, they propose something. Yeah. They, they propose whatever they propose. Mm -hmm. It's not real until it hits town meeting when mm -hmm. we can suggest a different name. Mm -hmm. So. They already have the lots up for sale. You saw that, right? Oh, I did see that. Yeah. Yes. I, that's Wow. Yeah. Without having all of their mm -hmm. ducks in a row. Yes. Liberties mm -hmm. and um, and they will be able to process. Um, where are we on the um, junk air? Did they get their license with them? No. Okay. He um, sent in his letter dated July 15th requesting that his license that expired June 30th be renewed. Um, Tom Clark has already gone out there to review the conditions. He issued certified mail last week saying you are not compliant with these things that we talked about and um, you're going to get a cease and desist if you don't hurry up and fix them. So he's working on that. Um, I saw a couple of things that he's done differently. He's put some metal across his gate so you can't see in. Yes. And not all that you can't see in. But yeah, that's one of the conditions. He's and supposed then to see that. Break the yard. Yeah. So. yeah. So he's got a ways to go. Mm. Um, we hope that this letter will help motivate him to become compliant. Um, so what happens? Um, he's expired, right? So does he does he have to reapply? He has to reapply and pay for his license annually. Mm -hmm. um, he never got an 18 license because of all that happened mm -hmm. with the town. So at some point. We can say we've given you ample notice and warning about all the things that are um, not compliant and, and you have a cease and desist order. Mm -hmm. um, be ready for legal fees. And the towing has not been decided upon either, right? No, because he's been out of planning there. for that and he has submitted documents to his engineer who's just not um, submitted things. So that's not so much his fault, though at some point we have to say, you know, where's your stuff? Um, it's just a little sticky because he's done what he can do and it's really, you know, in the hands of his professional. But, you know, I suppose we can put a deadline on that. Well, I just would like to know if there's any more um, police activity up there that um, isn't being resolved. I don't, you know, I don't know if police has been called up and if there's still being uh, nuisances to the neighbors. Well, when it does get to planning, I will make sure that police is notified of that hearing and can make it this time. You know, because if they're cleaning up themselves and not having the nuisance problem that they were having, that both neighbors were complaining about, and police aren't being called every day to there. I guess I've been a problem with them having, well, legally it's, having it. Not, it, it yeah, it's, it's hard know. to justify not allowing somebody to operate their livelihood without cause and process and, and all those right. things. But it has to um, be better than what it was. Well, sure. right, you have to yeah. follow the rules about it. Yeah, so, all right. Um, I think to change the battery. Okay. What does that mean? Stop that means pause, pause the meeting for a second. Pause the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Pause. Okay. All right. Let's go get it. I'm so excited. No, it's okay. I said, well, I need to stand. It. It's open. Can we turn down the AC a little bit? Are you mm. not really hot, are you? Oh, no, I'm fine. Oh, well, then it's, the rest of us are freezing. Yeah. <laughs>
This one had 124 minutes. Already in it, you mean? Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, okay. And the other one already. So you turned it on? Yeah. Okay. Um, review of the office. Um, we have a letter from the governor, the office of the governor, um, explaining um, his position on the budget. And That's the same one that we were emailed, yeah, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I emailed that and I emailed the other one is, is from the legislature about their position on the budget. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, well, Yep. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing, it's very lengthy, um, but it explains this is from Avatar, which we've already talked about. That is um, a letter from the state wondering if we're going to do inventories this year. Oh, okay. um, the, the select board voted not to do inventories last year. Right. Um, it is. It can be an annual decision. Oh. Okay. Um, some towns do it once every five years, every other year, never. So what did our vote say? Was it to discontinue it permanently or is it just discontinuing for this year? Well, it doesn't really matter because if you want to do it, you can do it. Oh. Um, you know, because that was a previous board. So um, it's really up to you. You can do inventories. It's a fresh decision. It wasn't a previous board, was it? Well. Was it you? Yeah. It was three, well. Okay, all right. You, you yeah, but we can reenact it if we want to, so, but as long as... At any time, yeah. I mean only once a year, right. but on any year you can make a different decision. Um, I, I, I would vote no, um, because... Um, well, it didn't do anything. It, I mean, right. it didn't really do anything for us, correct? I mean, that's why well, we decided the, to... The penalty. Well, um, so you, you have the revenue from the um, penalties. Um, the ones who didn't do. It's, yeah. And then the administrative cost of postage is sending them out, and you do have to store them forever. They don't ever expire. Oh my god. Well. So what is this asking for? Uh, if asking? we're going to be using form PA28 in 2020, we're not. So they need to know, are they mailing us the, the forms, forms or not? not? Okay, yeah. so we need to make a vote on that? Um, I think we probably should. All right. Um, I, I, I'll move that we will not use form PA28. In year 2020. I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 It's form PA 28. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, and they'll so send it to us every year. They're going to send you this letter every okay. year. Okay. So who's the assessing official? Um, you two. Oh, okay. okay. So we'll not. I'll let you sign it oh, first. Someone. Unless you want to delegate that, you know, I mean, <laughs> that's, you know, anybody can be, not anybody, but you can, you know, if you really don't ever want to do it again, you can delegate for somebody else to that. I wouldn't suggest that. Right? Yeah, but I think it should be the decision of whoever. Yes. Well, because it's still a new decision that you all are not doing it, and somebody can really yep. have different values. Sure, so I'll just let it come every year. Are you going to put the... Of the town hall's phone number? I can finish filling it out. Okay. I didn't know what they wanted my personal number. No, you don't do that. Okay. Do All that. right. Yeah, I'll just do that in the folder. Uh, and we have a letter from American Tower. Our representative there is touching base. Um, more information about a perpetual easement uh, program, which we discussed last fall. Um, and decided not to do. And decided not to do. But she's reaching out to let us know there's still an opportunity. Um, I don't think we need any action on that okay. at this point. And we just made that decision. Um, and that's it. That's not public. And this is that's for our highway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep, that's it. Okay. I have a question. Did you go into the MS-535? And sign it. I, I haven't done that yet. That's the oh, um, thank you for saying the that. DRA portal. Yes, I need to. I need to print I it and um. No. I need to print it and have you all sign it. Okay, so you need to print it. You don't sign it online in the program, the portal. No. Okay. It, so what you do is it, you go online and you review it, and by all means review it if you want to review it. Do you have a password? Um. 
I think you do. I'll look at my own. But, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I, I can send it to you so you can okay. review it. Mm -hmm. I will print it for you to sign. Okay. Um, if you want to change anything, we, we have to talk to the auditor to if you find this any, is his finding. This is his thing. This is 2018. This is, oh, okay. this is his final report or, on the okay. financial standing of the town for 2018. Okay. Did you mm -hmm. talk to him about the cemetery trust? Yes. And what did he say? It was. Um, I got kind of an. I, I I don't have a conclusion really to okay. share. Um, the bank balance doesn't match what he thinks it should. However, I spoke to the person who manages that, and um, they managed it in a way that the Department of Revenue approved for them to manage it, and it has been decided that it's done. So, but the, he also indicated that it does match on that email that he sent to us. Not, not the, not the auditor, but the. Well, right. So I, I just, I haven't, I haven't reconciled that yet. Okay. I haven't, like, I, I need to follow up with okay. both of them and find out, you know. I mean, I just want to get a slap on the hand if it's not necessary. If it isn't, indeed. Well, I'd like to understand yeah. why yeah. he's saying it doesn't match if it does match. But, yeah. but what I think is the problem is that the person who manages the account is saying that they absolutely did what they were directed to do, and it equals what the outcome. The expected outcome. I think for that 2018. That, well, I think it was even goes back or, or, or to 17. 17. Right, right. It was um, a, yeah, it was before. Yeah, that. I so think they were like a whole year, which shouldn't have been on the audit report than if it was what it should have been. Well, agreed. Yeah. And I think the hiccup is that um, perhaps what the, you know, the auditor, for some reason, might not be aware of what DRA allowed, and okay. you know. When you multiply things by a number of decimal points mm -hmm. or stretched over different years, then you can change the outcome and you can have more than one acceptable outcome. Mm -hmm. And they might just be on different pages about what the acceptable outcome was supposed to be. Okay. So I will straighten that out and get back to you. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. Oh, I have this one here. I don't think there's anything in this one, though. Those are just bills to approve. Yeah, I already did. Okay, so we have a purchase order 1661 indoor exempt for um, the rec department for a total of $225. This is indoor climbing center for teen camp. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? I say yes, but I'm going to say hi. <laughs> okay, so that's all we have for uh, post comments and stuff, right? Yep. Okay, uh, community input? Uh, yeah, when you're talking about tours upstairs, I'd be really careful of the balcony. I know when we went up two years ago and helped clean up there, it's pretty weak up in the balcony yeah, area. Yeah, that's where it was. That's where it was scary. Yeah, I would almost say that we shouldn't let them up there. Because you can actually, if you go near the balcony area, you can actually see the road out through the side. What? Anything else? No? Okay. Um, we have to go into non public for personnel and welfare. Yes. Yes. I move we go into non public session for. Let's do um, personnel first. Yeah, and then well, Then we have to come out and go back in and yes. welfare. Okay. Okay, so I'll uh, second it. Roll call. Uh, Miles? Yes. 